open for you guys. I'm going to do a binomial times a binomial. Um, if you guys remember, we talked about we talked about multiplying when we were doing FOIL, right? If you guys remember, if we were doing factoring by FOIL. So basically, on a problem like this, you guys can apply distributive property. Remember, <laughs> distributive property states whenever you have a number outside the parentheses, you need to multiply that term times both of the terms inside the parentheses, right? And you could do that with both of those terms. However, the easier way to do that was either using FOIL or my preferred method, which is the box method, which basically you take one binomial and put it on one side, and you take the other binomial and you put it on the other side. Now, yes? It's the same like, section as you were just talking about. Yeah, but now we're doing multiplication, though. I'm not adding. But you guys can basically see I have two complex numbers that I'm multiplying, right? Now, in this case, when we're just, when remember adding, I said you can only add real with real, complex with comp, or imaginary with comp imaginary. But with multiplication, it's kind of like, um, you know, I can't add 2 plus 3x, right? Those are not like terms. They don't have the same variable factors. But I can multiply 2 times 3x. That gives me 6x. Well, that's kind of the same thing with real and imaginary numbers. Yeah, we can't add real to imaginary, but we can multiply them. So here is a real times a real. 1 times 3 is obviously 3. 1 times negative 2i, though, is just going to be negative 2i. 3 times 3i, again, all you're basically doing when you're multiplying a real times imaginary is just multiplying the coefficients. You're just multiplying the real portions of each number. 3 times 3i is 9i. And then over here, we have negative, two times, or negative 2i times 3i which becomes a negative 6i squared, right? Just like you would have x times x is x squared, i times i is i squared. Now remember what I talked about a second ago. We remember what I talked about when we were talking about i, i squared, i cubed, i, um, so forth. So now we write everything in descending order. We notice we can combine those. So I have 3 plus 9i minus 2i. It should be 7i. I just figured I'd write it out. This becomes 7i, right? 3 plus 7i. Now, ladies and gentlemen, what's i squared represent? What does i squared represent? Negative 1. Minus 6 times negative 1. Now, what's negative 6 times negative 1? Negative. Positive 6. So I have 3 plus 7i plus 6. Now I can go back and add my real terms, or my real numbers, which is 3 and 6, which would be 9 plus 7i. Yes? Why'd you do it in that order? Do what in what order? Like the equation. You like circle those two, and then you would. Then yeah, I, you could have just written it like this, 3 plus 7i minus 6 um, times negative. I just did it. I just kind of broke it up one step by step. So it doesn't yeah. matter what order yeah. it, it is. Oh, no, no, no. The only thing you want to do is make sure at the end, you have it in A plus BI format. Oh, okay. But I don't care how you write it out like that. It doesn't really matter. Just make sure your final answer is in that form. Okay. Anybody in? Yes? This is just like a total random example of me explaining how to add numbers. This has nothing to do with this problem. OK? Does that make sense? Mas, menos, kind of? OK. 